All right, all right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Michael Jernigan, and this is the Main Event Wrestling Podcast, a part of the Press Play Podcast Network. I am joined by my tag team partner, as always, uh, the co-host of the show, the JV player of the show, um, kind of just to fill in, just kind of hanging around the back corner of the show. I'm awful harsh today, man. I apologize. That's all right. Hey, I apologize. look. Mr. I, J.M. Patterson, the icon. J. I J. totally Patterson. understand your fear of what is sitting across the table. I get it. I am what everybody tunes in to listen to. It's hard to take sometimes. I am the woo, Rick Flair. Shoot. The sizzler. The sizzler. The golden corral of this show. You may the need, icon. You may need to change your name, your 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 nickname from the icon to the sizzler. I like the sizzler. The sizzler. We going the sizzler. If y'all don't know what that's from, White Man Can't Jump. Check it out. One of the best basketball movies ever made. Ever, I said it. Your mama's an astronaut. <laughs> Speaking of basketball, basketball season just kicked off. We're here in North Carolina. Basketball is a, kind of a big deal here. We're in ACC country. Duke had their first game. I know yep. you're a fan on Tuesday night. The Heels, which is my team, had their first game last night. Both got wins. Um, I think the Heels looked a little bit better, though. I'm not sure. I didn't watch either game. <laughs> I didn't to either. To be honest with you. I did watch some of the uh, some of the Duke-Kansas uh, game. I watched a few minutes, but not much. Somebody said, uh, man, you would really like this Duke team. They play defense. I said, but they, if they can't shoot, they got to play defense. Well, I know Kansas had 25 turnovers and they only won by two. So, yeah, so yeah. they're not that good. Yeah. The defense, I guess, may be okay, but only yeah. with the offense. So. But we're not here to talk about basketball. We're here to no. talk about the great sport of professional Wrestling. It was a good wrestling week. Man, it was this phenomenal week. I think last week was a little down with the wrestling, TV wrestling. This week, however, it was a good week, and I think there's a couple of reasons why. Mainly because we saw more NXT talent this week on WWE TV than what we have seen in weeks, what we have seen ever. To right. be honest, what we have seen ever, and we have the Saudi Arabians to thank for that. Well, here's what I think: NXT was great being on the shows. But here's what I think really happened. You had a wrestling show. We've talked about it. Vince McMahon is more entertainment. But you had a wrestling show that started building storylines going into Survivor Series. Mm -hmm. With NXT now being a part of Survivor Series with Raw and SmackDown. You saw some storylines being built. And uh, so, yeah, Saudi Arabia... We appreciate you messing everything up, That's holding right. them hostage or whatever you've done. That's right. Can you do it 51 more weeks of the year? <laughs> That's all the, I want to know. The, um, the official response was it, it was technical difficulties with the plane. Um, so, who knows? Malfunction. Yeah, when you're handcuffed to a prison wall, that's probably a good <laughs> malfunction. Lord, I hope the Saudis ain't listening to this. They Man, gonna... look, 214 Foster Street, oh, Nashville. Gosh. Bring you and your machetes and come on. We ain't scared of y'all. Oh, the Saudis are going to come we hunt you down. We ain't scared of y'all. Bring a check, too. Bring I want check. some of that Vince McMahon blood money y'all giving away. We'll take that tithe check. Absolutely. We'll All right. So, the uh, a lot of the, 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 the talent that went over for Crown Jewel – we're stuck in Saudi Arabia on Friday. Of course, we had SmackDown on Friday night. Yeah. So they supplemented uh, the, in it, the with the NXT boys and girls for the guys that were still the guys and girls that were still stuck in Saudi right. Arabia. Uh, which it worked out good because we're building towards Survivor Series. Yeah. Uh, you have Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT for the first time ever this year at Smack, at the at Survivor Series, and so it worked out good to introduce these characters, to introduce these guys, and Make NXT look strong compared to SmackDown. Oh, made it look. I mean, the NXT swept SmackDown every match. Yep. But notice, notice, when did they do it? Uh, What do you mean when they do when it? When did they do it on SmackDown? The whole show. No. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, basically they coming did up it. the first match. They did it after Brock uh. Lesnar. Quit, because they all feared the beast. Yes, Brock come out, opened the show. Uh, he quit SmackDown. Don't blame him. Reason being because he wants to go to Raw and go hunting. Who's he hunting for? All five foot five, 190 pound Ray Mysterio Jr. Now, keep in mind, 
Paul Heyman said during this promo, he said that Brock can't do anything to Ray because Ray's a SmackDown guy, or Ray's a Raw guy. Right. Brock's a SmackDown guy. One day before this, they just had the main event at Crown Jewel yep. with a SmackDown guy and, and a, a Raw yeah. guy. So, whatever. Whatever it takes to get one belt on each show, I don't right. care I, anymore. And, and that's what, I mean, that's what it came down to. Yeah. They got to put a belt on Raw. But Brock Lesnar shouldn't chase anybody. Now, no. I would, you know, if it was me, I'm quitting because the talent on SmackDown ain't good enough to be chasing my belt. Mm. I'm going to Raw. Mm. I'm using an angle like that. But to chase the five foot three. Muggsy Bowes, Ray Ray, a uh, professional wrestling who's been thrown around more than any professional wrestler alive. Probably. Well, what was my man's name that was with the Dudley Boys back in the day? Spike. Spike. Yeah, he took a beating. Yeah, he, Spike Dudley. He would take a beating. That's jung, uh, not Jungle Boy. What's the other boy's name? Uh, uh, Marco Stunt. Yeah, that's the Marco Stunt yep. of yep. 2019 yep. right here. But, but I get it, you know, I get it. But, I mean, you look at Raw after Ray. Who do you really feud with? Lord, don't tell me it's another Seth, Seth Rollins, Rollins feud. Yes. Golly, Seth Rollins, yes. I can't handle that. It'll it'll come back around. Um, come come, well, come Royal Rumble time, come um, WrestleMania time after the first of the year, it'll yeah. probably be back around with Seth Rollins. I mean, there's nobody else there to go after. So we had Brock quit, and then he showed up on Monday Night Raw and uh, laid a beating on Dio Madden. We'll get to that in a minute. Dio took a good little beating, though. Yes, he did. Yeah, he did. Uh, from what I saw, you know why Dio took that? Because he's the uh, trained wrestler that's not over 60 years old at the desk. Well, that too. <laughs> and they are not. They do not like the commentating team. Okay. They think they're a little weak. And so you may not see Dio come back anymore. Well. That may be the shot that takes him off the camera. That's okay. That's all right. So after Brock quit, we had Bailey and Nikki Cross. Bailey won, but the big part of this match was Shayna Baszler come out of the crowd after the match, Man. had a stare down, had a beat down on Bailey. On this SmackDown show, you saw Shayna Baszler, my main man, Matt Riddle, Keith Lee, Bro. Tommaso Ciampa, Rhea Ripley, Tegan Knox, uh, and Adam Cole all on this show. Baby. I loved the interaction with. Um, Daniel Bryan and Triple H yeah. and HBK. Triple H said something to Daniel Bryan about you heard somebody's looking for a fight. Yeah. Daniel Bryan, so I'm looking for a fight. Yeah. And so Triple H said, so Well, you're not going to fight me. Did you see Shawn Michaels? Shawn in the starts background? taking his jacket yes, off. Yes. The crowd started making a little noise. Yeah. They, people actually thought, myself halfway included, not completely, but halfway included. Thought, man, maybe Sean's gonna have a match on yeah. SmackDown. That's what it looked uh, like. And then Sean put his jacket back on and said, said it's too "Whoa, cold. it's hot out yes. here!" Yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so that was good. I'll give him total credit. And then out come Adam Cole, and you had Adam Cole beat Daniel Bryan on national TV since WrestleMania. Daniel Bryan has put over Kofi, Buddy Murphy, and now Adam Cole. Daniel Bryan is what is good about professional wrestling. I don't know about that. You're crazy. I don't know about that. He is over. If he loses this match, it's no big deal. He is over. The crowd's going to cheer boo him. He is over as he could be. If he loses like this to put over Kofi at WrestleMania, Buddy Murphy to leading into that whole who killed, try to kill Roman Reigns yeah. thing, and now Adam Cole with NXT versus SmackDown, it's good for professional if you're, wrestling. If you are in Daniel Bryan's shoes. Yep. One of the hottest guys in the industry right now. Yep. One of the best heels in the business. Yep. Be, being honest with me now. Okay. Would you have put over Kofi? Yes. Kofi was the hottest thing other than Becky Lynch going into WrestleMania. I'm not doing it. If I'm you doing have it. to. You, you put over to. Buddy Murphy. Yes. It's an up and coming. Listen, no. This stop. Is, this is stop. why I'm saying that Daniel stop. Bryan is to take a line from Triple H from about five years ago. This is why Daniel Bryan is what's best. For business. He always does the right thing. See, he's reminding me of a 58-year-old Ric Flair. No. Yeah, because no, no, Flair, no. when Flair got old, he put everybody no, over. No, 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 no. And here's the same thing with Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan deserves a belt, for one. He ex just had one. Except for the hemp belt that he had. <laughs> he just had right? one a couple he, months ago. He deserves something. The guy is your – other than Baron Corbin and – that's probably it. Okay. He's your best heel 
on TV. Hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Other than I mean, nobody nobody likes Brock not because he's a heel. Seth Rollins is getting there because he's <laughs> he's a part timer, yeah, right? Yeah. And well, he's becoming more of a part, you know, more of a full time guy now since he's getting paid. It ain't happening. Millions, but he's 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 around more than he was. Right. But other than that, you and Seth Rollins is a heel because he's just an idiot on social media. People don't like him. Yeah. 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 And so I mean, you think. When Samoa Joe comes back, there's your good heel. Yep. Broke arm. When Elias comes back, broke ankle, there's you another heel. The Miz is a great heel, but they got him as a baby face right, right now. Right. But other than Daniel Bryan and uh, Corbin, who you got? That, that's still no reason why Daniel Bryan shouldn't be putting these guys over. You got to have somebody else good to, to fight against. Oh, look. Put have look have uh, Big E put somebody over. What you think is going to mean more for Adam Cole to beat Big E or to beat Daniel Bryan? First off, I don't. I, Daniel and I love Bryan. I love Adam Cole. Adam Cole shouldn't have beat Daniel Bryan clean. That's ridiculous. He shouldn't have. That's of course they had to make NXT look strong. Uh, they made him look strong the whole night. They could have just gave the boy no, a beat down. No, it's the same no. with the end of uh, Raw when uh, he's fighting Seth. Right? You yep. don't put your boy over. You don't put him over Seth. Why not? He should, had to, they should have. Had I agree. Have, you had to have a beat down. I agree. They should and that's have. where Daniel Bryan is being disrespected. And that's where he did the right thing for business. No, he's being disrespected. Where he put the, the newer guy over to make Survivor Series all that much better. See, I, here's what, you know, I said this a while back. I mean, it's been years ago when Hogan was at the end of his career. Yep. And Hogan wouldn't let anybody, you know, go over. He, he's not going to lose a match. And I always said back then, I think it was Brock Lesnar, I think it was some of those guys, I said, I really wish they would hurt Hogan, like in real life, <laughs> just because you're being a jerk. Well, listen, I mean, Hogan protected his his character, no oh, question. Oh, he still no does. Question. Oh, you, still no, does. no question. Stone Cold would probably be the same, but Stone Cold was the baddest SOB to walk the planet. Well, Hulk Hogan was the biggest star to walk the planet. Uh, I'm going Stone Cold. They're neck and neck. I, I, Stone I, Cold, I, Stone I Cold saved that business by himself. Hulk Hogan built it. But anyway. Rocky built it. So, Thunder lips. Speaking of Monday Night Raw, the uh, Seth Rollins come out, did a promo. Did you? I hate, I hate when wrestlers lose a belt, in this case on Thursday, come out on Monday, and they talk about it for two sentences, and then they move on to something else. Right. Like John Cena used to do it all the time. I like John Cena. I'm a Cena man. But he used to do it every time. He lost the belt, what, 16 times now. Yeah. Every time he lost it, he come out the following Monday night, and he wouldn't talk about it. He was happy. No, I want to see you lose a belt. I want to see somebody come out pissed. You mad about it. Yes, I want to see. I agree. But I remember when Brock, who did he lose to? He lost Maybe when he lost to Seth Rollins at uh, WrestleMania 31, and he come out Monday night after that. And that's when he F5 Michael Cole into the ring post. And just killed everybody and got suspended and was off TV for five months. But that's what I want to see. Oh, absolutely. I hate when a champion loses his belt and then he comes out the next night and he's like, well, you know, he was a better man. No, forget that. No. Let's go whip some tail. That's like like Tomasa, your boy. Yes. Didn't didn't lose the belt, had to vacate it, right? Yep, had neck surgery. Every week he comes out, he always talks about what? Goldie. Goldie. Yes. He's going to get Goldie back. Yes. And so that's what you want with Seth Rollins, yes. right? Yes. I mean, if that is the top prize in the company and I just lost it, I want it back. I agree. By everything necessary. Do what I can. But I, I tweeted, have you ever listened to Dave LaGreca on Busted Open Radio? No. I know, I know what it is, but no, I haven't. If you will listen to Dave LaGreca imitate Seth Rollins, he has him down <laughs> to a T. And I when I heard when I was listening to Seth do his interview, all I could hear was Dave LeGreco on Busted Open making fun of him. We're Seth Rollins and we're in Utah. And I tell you what, I'm a little upset. <laughs> and I mean he's got him down which I don't because I'm terrible. Obviously. But I mean he's got it down to a T. And Seth Rollins is just terrible on the mic. Yeah. That's why he can't do it. Yeah, I agree. He well, he's not terrible, but He's missing something. I don't know what it is. He's missing something. Let me go and tell you, and we're going to get to it. Last night was the best mic skills I've seen in a long time. Let's get to it. Last night on AEW, Dino, note, because ain't nothing else to talk about with Raw. Anything else you – No, I mean, just that sorry with, you know, Bobby Lashley, which is ridiculous. No, I ain't got no time for that. Ridiculous. I'm all for seeing Lana at any time, but yeah. come on. Uh, last night on AEW, Dino, note, Mike, you had Cody come out. 
He finally got a full interview with Tony Schiavone. I think this is this is episode five or six or something yep. like that. Finally, we got a full interview with Cody Rhodes, and my God, did he knock it out of the park with his promo leading into full gear this Saturday night. Man, and that's what we talk about with Seth Rollins. I mean, and I, you know, it's storylines, it's choreographed, it's whatever. But listening to Cody last night, you would think, that belt, his career, meant yeah. everything. In the, I mean, this dude is tearing up in his interview. Yes. He's sob and yes. gd and people. And yeah. He's, and I was like, dude, I bought into it. Yes. I was like, man, that was one of the best. I mean, even The Rock tweeted him and oh, said that he? was one of the greatest promos. Drop the mic. You killed the show. Good for The Rock. Good for him. So, Cody had a big announcement. His big announcement was that if he did not beat Chris Jericho, he could never again challenge for the AEW championship. So, when you hear that, your first thought is what? He's winning. No. Right? You don't, you don't feel that way? Nope. Well, why not? Okay. Here's the deal. We'll, we'll get to full gear predictions yeah. here, here in a little bit. But let me just say this. I didn't think Cody was winning, winning before last night. Okay. I don't think Cody's winning now. There is one, one small thing that could change my mind, and that is in January, on January the 4th, Chris Jericho is going to Wrestle Kingdom yep. for New Japan and wrestling Hiroshi Tanahashi in the uh, Tokyo Dome, whatever right. it's called over there. Um, by all reports, the uh, AEW and New Japan relationship is not good. Uh-huh. Um, but I don't know if it's got anything to do with the way the Young Bucks and Kenny left and all that, whatever, I don't know, but... There's not good. Um, the only way that I think Cody wins is if the AEW boys, if Tony Khan, Cody, um, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, all those top-notch boys, if they don't want their champion going to New Japan right. and wrestling a match thinking that he's going to lose that match right. and make their championship look bad. Yeah, and I if, get that. If that happens, he's gonna, he, he, there's a good chance Cody's going to win. Take that out of the picture just off of his gear, off of his announcement last night that if he did not beat Chris Jericho, notice he didn't say if I don't win the championship. Yeah. He said if I don't beat Chris Jericho. Right. He can win a disqualification match. He can. And I can tell you how it's going to happen. Tell me. Talk to me. Your boy. My boy. His best friend. Yes. MJF. You would say one of the best bad guys wrestling on TV. Absolutely. He hadn't been a bad guy for a couple of weeks. He hasn't. There is a chance, I believe, Saturday night, he turns in to, one, again, one of the best bad guys on TV. He's going because to Cody made this announcement. Because Cody said, if I don't win, I cannot challenge for the championship ever again. Right. If MJF were to cost him the championship, to cost him a chance to ever again challenge for that championship, he would once again be one of the biggest bad guys on wrestling TV. Yeah, and it all and it, it keeps the door open if it's a disqualification where he can challenge later down the road. Listen. It's, prof- it's TV wrestling, right? Exactly. He could he could lose he could get pinned one two three and he could win a battle royal six months from now and he could get back. I in, mean, we get back in the thing. Come Claire on. and him have lost like eighteen retirement, retirement matches. Yes, yes. yes. So, and they're back in. You know what this reminds me of? Talk to me. NWA Power. Oh, man, don't talk to me. What's uh, what's the Storm guy's name? Lost in the first episode. What's Tim. It? Is it Tim Storm? Tim Storm. Yes. Because you got James Storm. Yes, the that's, you're right. Yeah, Tim Storm lost episode one, and he said, if if I do not beat Nick Aldis, I will not challenge for the uh, NWA championship again. He's still on TV. Yeah. He's still working with Nick Aldis at times. Um, I think they're building up to something once again with Tim Storm getting another championship. In the NWA. You want me to tell you about the best thing about NWA power? Sure. Talk to me. Camille. You ready? Yeah. They had Mr. Kennedy out there. Oh, it's not Camille. Well, Tom, oh, sorry. Can I ahead. get there? I my fault. Go ahead. Eli Drake comes out there, and uh, they get into a little scuffle between Eli and, and Mr. Kennedy. And out of nowhere, Camille throws, like, her guy's not even out there. Is this episode five? Yeah. I haven't seen this one, but go ahead. Throws Eli Drake into him. Kennedy knocks him down. He's getting ready to attack. And then Camille steps over Eli Drake and shows what is one of the greatest things about leg day ever (laughs) and just stands there like. I wouldn't disagree. So even in the NWA, there's like, I could see Camille getting ready to cost the belt 
And there's a there's gonna be a great storyline there, guys. If you listen to this podcast and you do not watch NWA Power Tuesdays, six oh five, old school. It is incredible. You can go back and watch it anytime. Yeah, it's on YouTube. It's free. Go check it out. My man Colt Cabana won the belt, beat James Storm. Oh, did he? You yeah. ruined it for me. Thanks. All right. Well, you still say, watch it. Supposed to say spoiler alert. Give me a heads up. My bro. bad. P.S. Uh, so back to AEW. Cody had a had a hot promo. What did you think about Chris Jericho's video? Did you see it? The youngest AEW champion ever. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Little bubbly. Yes. Soul Train Jones, Virgil. Yes. On that thing. Yes. Probably one of the funniest and best videos leading up to a match ever. Did you see who the woman was that was talking? Uh, who was it? She uh, was Chris's aunt's friend from church. Yes. <laughs> and uh, they were chanting to uh, Jericho at the end of the match, you know, something dick. Right? Oh, okay. And did you catch I Jericho's response? No. He responded back to when they dressed Kane up as a woman in WWE mm -hmm. and gave her, oh, what was the name they gave her? I got to look this up. Oh, Hang no. on. Go to the next segment. I don't know. Let me go to me. Back to this thing. So, a couple weeks ago, Cody made this great video, had his mom on there, had his sister on there, had his brother on there, had Tony Schiavone on there. Right. And Jericho kind of spoofed it. Uh, he was sitting at a table. Sammy Guevara comes in with some some bubbly. With, yes. With some, some champagne. And Cody and um, Jericho's kind of, in the video, made it look like he was tuning him out. Right. He was focused on the match. And then you had, like, two minutes worth of shenanigans with Virgil on there from WWE uh, with Chris's aunt's friend from church yes talking about how um how uh cody's gonna get the piss beat out of him they kept going to jake hager who didn't say a word yes just, just standing there just silent standing there um hey, there was a shot of jericho in the bathtub with his hat and yes. his scarf on like he was bubble bath. out yes it was yes. so, so good so good video the main event for aew dynamite last night was hangman page and kenny omega versus jericho and sammy guevara um, all you need to know about this is Moxley come out with a barbed wire bat. Right. Um, Omega got a barbed wire broom. They had a stare down. Uh, and then they just had a big free for all going down at AEW. And we loved every you, bit of every it. Bit of, you had the inner circle out there. Uh, you had the Young Bucks, the MJF. Elite. Yes. You had everybody going. I love a hot finish. I told you after the, after yeah. the show last night. That remind me of the old NWA day, N NWO days, right? When everybody was just fighting, Sting was clearing the ring, everybody was just going crazy when the show went off the air. I love a hot finish to TV wrestling. Let me tell you, we we talk a lot about Cody, we talk a lot about Jericho. Let me give you one of my highlights. All right, freaking Pac. He's good, man. This dude is an. I mean, we talk about heels on the W. Right now. With MJF? Yep. Right now, Pac is it. MJF's not healed right now. No, I mean, he's going to be. He may be he's after, gonna be. after I mean, Saturday. I don't know if it's going to be Saturday or not, but you know he's going to be, and he's great on the mic. But Pac, I mean, even Pac showed up at the end. Yep. I mean, what about the referee botch in the Pac match? In the opening match, yes. Uh, How uh, terrible yeah, was Pac, that? Pac hit the uh, black arrow, had him down, um, had Trent Beretta down. The referee counted one, two – there was no kick out. Pac didn't pull him up. There was no shoulder off the mat. The referee just held up My man for just some stopped reason. Yes. out of nowhere. What was he thinking? I don't know. I don't but, know. But, oh, I mean, great show in Charlotte. Yes. By God, North Carolina. We even texted each other and said, why are we not there? We should have been there. The crowd was hot all night long. The crowd it was, was loud. Incredible. Yes, it was good. It was good. Over on the other channel last night on USA, we had NXT – um, the women's war games match kind of took form. We had, we now know who the good guys are. Yep. We got Rhea Ripley as the team captain. Um, Candice LeRae, one of my favorites, Candice hey. LeRae, Tegan Knox, and one of my least favorites, Mia Yim. They had a big brawl. Mia Yim come out with the kendo stick and basically laid everybody out. Kendo sticks are getting a little overplayed. They're, they're showing up in a lot of matches now. We yeah. got to, we got to find something else. How much would it take? For you, for you to let me hit you with one, I want to know what it's made of first, <laughs> uh, right? Kendo stick. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I guess the, the way they splinter so easy, 
Something's up with them. There's th- got to be a little something going on. You think on. those are like working kendo sticks? I'm hoping so. Like fake kendo sticks? Because, you know, when we lived in Denton back in the day. Yeah. We would always mess around for wrestling because we've been in wrestling now for years. Yeah. And um, we, took, I, we took some chair shots. We took chair shots. Uh, Buster, mm-hmm. we put him through a table. Mm-hmm. Well, I remember we didn't have a kendo stick. And so Charles had a fat bat. Remember those big I, fat bats? I remember getting hit with one of those one time. He took a, he yeah. gave me a shot in my back. Yeah. And it was supposed to be up around my shoulders. <laughs> well, he hit me in my lower back and knocked the breath out of me. And I couldn't talk to tell him to stop. Yeah. And he hit me like three or four more times. And let me tell you what. Yeah. The fat bat yeah. ain't no joke. It may not be a kendo stick, it but by God, it it'll no send jo- you to sizzle in a heartbeat. It ain't no joke. No. So we got the women's war games. We got Ripley, Larray, um, Tegan Knox, and Mia Yim versus Shayna Baszler, Io Shirai, and then two members to be named later. Oh no, they had a third. What's uh, what's my girl's name with the hair? I can't. Gosh. Oh, uh, man! If you, oh my God, she threw uh, Carmella over the suitcases mm-hmm. and everything. What? Anyways, let's keep going. Yes. So. They're getting ready for the women's NXT War Games match. The main event of NXT was the OC, my man, uh, AJ Styles, against uh, Ciampa, uh, Tommaso Ciampa, Matt Riddle, and Keith Lee. And, man, we talk about how good AEW was going off the air. NXT was probably just as good going off the air. So they had a really good match. Then everything, it all hits the fan, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, You had Finn Balor come out. You had Adam Cole come out. Adam Cole was left standing, him and Finn Balor. You had a little moment with um, AJ Styles and you Finn Balor. You thought the Balor. club was getting together? Yes. And then um, uh, Adam Cole comes out, knees um, AJ Styles in the back of the head, and then you have a moment with Finn Balor and, and Adam Cole as they went off the air. Yeah. I love the way that ended, too. If you had to pick a winner, who are you picking? Keith Lee, just for this one reason. <laughs> Why? Did you see when my man had Carl, not Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows? Yes, yes. In a squat form. And, yeah, and holding him body slam style. And and basically curled yeah. that dude and yeah. stood up. Dude, Luke Gallows weighs what, 300 some pounds? At least, yeah. At least. That, that to me was almost as good as the spot where he saved Roderick Strong yep. and them boys because they totally messed up. Dodge Kovic, yep. Yeah. I mean, but I, look. When it comes to all this, man, who won? Oh. Pick me a winner. Wednesday night war. Who won oh, the war? Uh, if you take if you take both hot endings out, mm-hmm. I'm going with AEW. You can't take them both out because they're both part of the show. I know, but man, it is, it's a toss up, man. Both shows were were hot. I think because yeah. even even at the beginning of NXT, it opens up with. The OC jumping yeah. and attacking uh, undisputed era, and so both both shows started hot. I mean, ended hot, man. They best two shows by far, neck and neck, that they've had. Uh, I don't mean last week was good too. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, both shows are great. I think um, I think I enjoy the AEW show more. Um, I, um, the Cody Rhodes interview may have done it. Yeah, yeah, probably so. Um, but NXT, the way it ends with Balor and uh, Ciampa and um, Adam Cole, it was good. It was, good. Man, it was real good. It was good. All right, let's look ahead to Saturday night. This coming Saturday man, I in Baltimore, wait. Maryland, we have the AEW Full Gear. This is their first pay-per-view show since being on TV on TNT every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Let's drive up there. So we drive to Baltimore? Yeah. We didn't even drive to Charlotte last night. You wanted to go to Baltimore? I'm thinking about it. <laughs> this is going to, you don't want to drive an hour south, but you want to drive six hours north. That makes sense. This is pay-per-view. That makes sense. Okay. We're going to run down the card. We got predictions. We got your guaranteed predictions. Absolutely. <coughs> Excuse me. We got, got choked your, up on it so idea. good. We got your guaranteed predictions for AEW full gear. Let's start at the bottom of the card. In the pre-show match, we have Bia Presley versus the doctor, the dentist, Britt Baker, Jam Patterson, who you got. Hands down, Britt Baker. Yeah, I think so. Then the main show, we have Joey Janela, the bad boy Joey Janela, going up against Sean Spears and my main man, the original Four Horsemen member, Tully Blanchard. I'm going with Sean Spears, but did you see what well, we talked about? Joey Janela's, who's the one who about killed your boy uh, off that uh, the top turnbuckle. He was in that match with the Jurassic Express that almost oh, when he got killed. Hurt? Yeah. Oh. 
He was, so, Joey, Joey, you getting punished because you about killed Marco Stunt. Speaking of about getting killed, we didn't mention this with NXT. Riddle did a backflip over the top oh rope God. with the crowd underneath him, and he hit clipped the top rope, Man. and my boy's head about hit that apron when he come down last night. That could have been real ugly. Yes. All right, for the AEW Women's World Championship, we have Rio. Have you heard that she only weighs 95 pounds? Yeah. They tell that every show, two times every match. I'm tired of it. I'm about wore out. I know she weighs. Let me know when she gains weight, okay? Yeah, I don't at least need to one know. pound. Yes. Give, let me, give me something else. We have Rio versus, uh, I'm going to butcher this name because I'm from the south of the United States of America. By God. And this lady is from Japan. We have Rio versus Emi Sakura. I'm going with Sakura just because I'm tired <laughs> of hitting about 95 pounds. No, I think Rio keeps the belt. Oh. Uh. All right, then we got SoCal Uncensored SCU oh, man, versus your boys, the Lucha Brothers, versus Private Party because they won a match against the Dark Order last night in a three-way match for the AEW Tag Team Championship. Patterson, who you got? My heart, my heart tells me Lucha Party or Lucha Underground. I mean Lucha Brothers. Lord, Lord. I'm, every, I'm Lucha something. Lucha Brothers. You want to go Taco Bell for lunch? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but. I say SoCal keeps the belts. Yeah, I think so. Um, they, they're pumping up Scorpio Sky. I think so. Way too much for them to lose after just having a belt for two weeks. Yeah, I agree with that. So uh, Next up, we got maybe one of my uh, favorite matches. Got a, got a chance to be the match of the night. We got uh, Hangman Adam Page versus Pac. I'm going with Pac. Man, oh, man. I'm going with Pac. I'm going with Hangman. I'm going with Pac unless the referee doesn't count three when he's supposed to. I'm going with <laughs> Hangman just because uh, I really thought – well, I didn't really think, but I had a, a little bit of thought that he would win the championship against uh, Jericho. Jericho. And so I'm going to say they do him right and he wins this pay-per-view. All right. We'll see. I'm going with Pac. Like uh, Pac we have a tag team grudge match. If you, will, if you will, the Young Bucks versus Santana and Ortiz. I think Santana and Ortiz have gotten the best of the Young Bucks so far, other than I think it was Matt Jackson last night jumped off the top yes. of one of those light towers as I the show Shane McMahon had invaded was going the off the air. Probably, what, 15 to 20 feet in the air. Yep. He jumped off and took everybody out. Who you got, Patterson? I'm going with the Young Bucks, man. I agree. I, you know, they haven't, they haven't won a big match recently. You know, they put everybody over. Mm -hmm. So, I think tonight or Saturday night, Saturday night. Okay. Then we got for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship, the Le Champion, the little bit of the bubbly. Yes. Chris Jericho versus Cody. But keep in mind, Baltimore is NWA country. It's old school WCW country. It's dusty country. It's four horsemen territory. It's classic wrestling. Now remember, Jericho came up through WCW. That don't matter, I man. I can, listen, the crowd's gonna be hot. I will say, I consider Jericho like an old school guy. I do too. No question. No question. I do too. No question. Oh man, <sighs> it's Jericho, bro. It's Jericho. It's easy. <laughs> Not a man. Jericho disqualification. So who's gonna win the match? It's gonna be a disqualification. Jericho's gonna keep the belt. There's not gonna be a winner. Well, there's got to be a, if it's qual somebody's getting disqualified. Who's getting disqualified? Jericho is. How is he going to get disqualified? Because MJF, like you said, the either MJF or the inner circle is going to help keep mm -hmm. Jericho keep the belt like the horseman used to do for Flair back in the day. Yeah, Jericho's winning. I'm telling you, Jericho's keeping the belt. Well, he he could still yeah, lose and yeah. keep the he, belt. He, let me, he may not win the match, technically, right. but he's keeping the belt. Yeah. Yeah. And then finally, by all reports, this will be the last match of the night, a lights-out match with Kenny Omega and John Moxley. Apparently, after the championship match is done, they will turn the lights off. Technically, the show is over. They will turn the lights back on. These two men will come out from the back. They will have a match that is unsanctioned. Anything goes. My question is, uh, will there be a referee there? Because if this match is unsanctioned and this is yeah, not technically this is not technically right. an AEW match, can you have a referee? How do you know when somebody wins? Is it just going to be a beatdown when Last so man standing. when so and so can't get up? And then you say, "Well, I'm done. We're headed to the back." Well, we know this is going to be good. 
Oh, I think it's going to be good. It's going to be intense. I think it's going to be good. Because uh, Kenny Omega, super intense when he wrestles. Moxley, super intense when he wrestles. Uh, there will be blood. I think so. I think there will be lots of blood. There should be. Uh, man, I hmm. – you know, I, I'm looking at it from a, a WWE point of view, I guess. Don't. Everything's 50-50. You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't. Uh, I'm going with John Moxley. I agree. I agree. I think uh, Moxley's been built up as this crazy, um, hardcore type guy, yep. and this is his match. Yeah, I think I think he wins. I think Moxley wins. I do think it'll be a crazy match, though. Oh, it's going to be good. There's going to be some crap go down in this Match. I gotta say, good. I am more interested in in John Moxley than I ever was Dean Ambrose. Oh, absolutely. Ambrose is probably my least favorite member of the Shield back in the day. I didn't care much when he won the WWE Championship, when he was Intercontinental. Cha- I just didn't care much for the way he he appeared on TV. I didn't care if he won or lost. Right. Turn turn the channel for me. However, when Moxley comes out, like I'm watching. Like, yeah. I want to see what this fool does. Yeah, it's going to be something good. I am more interested, much more interested he, in Moxley than I ever was Dean Ambrose. Him and Eli Drake right now in NWA have like that stone cold persona about them. Yep. Where they're just bad to the bone and it intrigues you because like you said, man, something good is going to happen. Something crazy. Some, yeah. Something somebody I, some, could really get hurt. Something I, I want to see. I got to see what this fool does. Right. Yeah, exactly. I agree. I agree. All right. That is your full gear, AEW full gear predictions and rundown for this Saturday night. We'll be back next Thursday. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, I'm good. Okay. We'll be back next Thursday uh, with a full review of the full gear pay-per-view and let you know how we feel about Chris Jericho still being the AEW uh, World Heavyweight Champion. With a little bubbly. All right, y'all, we've got a, a show, a segment of the show that we do every week here. We end our show every week with a segment we like to call Main Event, Mid Card, or Dark Match. Boom! We got three wrestlers. Jay, today, Jam's got three wrestlers. He's going to tell me I've got to pick one to be in the Dark Match, one to be in the Mid Card Match, and one to be in the main event match. Patterson, All right. what you got? The last one I gave you was pretty tough. I agree. Macho Man, Sting, yep. Lex Luger. Yep. All right. I picked this time th- what they would consider three big men. Okay. All right. All right. The first one, Big Van Vader. I like Big Van Vader. By the way, does anybody else, when you see Keith Lee, see the resemblance to Big Van Vader? I can see it. It's almost the same body size. Yeah. The same. I think Keith Lee's probably a little more athletic, but Vader was, man, he could, he was a moot salt and machine back yeah. in the day. Um, I could see them two, um, see the, re- the resemblance between those two. Number two. Yep. Yoko Zuna. I love Yoko Zuna too. I remember in 1993, early 94, late 93, watching some WWE show on a Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. It was maybe a wrestling challenge or something. And Yoko Zuna coming out. And I knew he had had the championship belt for a while. I remember sitting there as a 12, 13-year-old boy thinking, ain't nobody going to beat this fool. <laughs> He's going to be the champion until he dies. Ain't nobody, be- <laughs> ain't nobody beating him. And number three. Okay. Probably my favorite of the three. Uh-huh. And I do love me some Vader. Samoa Joe. Uh, okay. Samoa Joe, Big Van Vader, and Yoko Zuma. That's good. <laughs> Who you got? Those are three studs. Well, hmm. I don't mess around. Those are three studs. I agree. I agree. All right, here we go. Uh, dark match. Give me. Mm, pressure. Samoa Joe. What? <laughs> In the dark match, give me Samoa Joe. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it was either Samoa Joe or Yokozuna, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah. give, me, <laughs> give me Samoa Joe in the dark match. Uh, That's the best dark match in the history of wrestling. Give me Yokozuna in the mid-card match. I'd go with that. And Vader in the main event. I love Vader. The same thing I thought about Yokozuna. Couldn't nobody beat him. I thought the same thing about Vader. Like, this fool was legit beating people up back in the yeah. day. He about killed Sting more than once. And it's a shame um, he ain't in the Hall of Fame by now. It's a shame he didn't go in the Hall of Fame before he passed. And now it's still a shame that he's still not in the Hall of Correct. Fame. Correct. 
Um, I agree. Yeah, give me Vader. I love I loved Vader back in the day. Vader time. Yoko Zuna, I loved I thought he was good. Um, Great Bru- bad guy. Bruce Pritch- Pritchard just did a whole podcast a couple weeks ago on Yoko Zuna. Um, yeah, you put him in the in the mid card and then Samoa Joe. No offense, don't come looking for me, Joe. I love you. You're my man. But somebody's got to be in the dark carton match. What you got to be? Got to be Yoko Zuna. You could listen if so. I wouldn't argue flip flop those two and be fine. I would, I would love not. to I see argue. Samoa Joe and Vader in a match. That'd be something. That'd be and, good that'd too. Be intense. Boy. That'd be good too. Be Them intense. folks would beat the devil out of each other. All right, everybody, this is the Main Event Wrestling Podcast. Look us up on Twitter at Main Event Pod. Main Event Pod. Uh, Send us a tweet. Let us know what you like about pro wrestling. Let us know what you don't like about pro wrestling. We would love to talk to you about. We promise if you tweet us, we'll reply. We'll reply back to all your tweets. We'd love to talk to you about pro wrestling. Look us up on Twitter, Main Event Pod. You can find our show and all the Press Play Podcast shows on PressPlayPodcast.com. That is PressPlayPodcast.com. We'll be back next week with a full review of the AEW Full Gear show coming up this Saturday night live from Baltimore, Maryland. I'm Michael Jernigan. That's my tag team partner, Jam Patterson. See you next week.